accidental hero stories go, the Queen Garnet Plum is a cracker. In the early 2000s, two Queensland Department of Primary Industry scientists set out to breed a better plum, a job that would normally take about 12 years. We were breeding for disease resistance, but we're also breeding for sweetness, and we're also breeding for export quality plums that were large, attractively coloured and very firm. Professor Bruce Topp, who now works in macadamias, recalls in just six years, he and colleague Dougal Russell identified one cross with so much potential, they named it. Queen for Queensland, Garnet for its colour. Some of them had yellow flesh and some of them had red flesh. And this one stood out straight away because of the deep colour of the red flesh. The colour raised hopes it was high in anthocyanins, a plant compound with anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. They're associated with blue, red and purple fruits and vegetables. The Queen Garnet's, or QG's, levels were higher than the gold standard blueberries. You're looking for that really exceptional one. And so when we found something like Queen Garnet, that's every plant breeder's dream. Knowing it had something special, the Queensland government sold the rights to commercialise the plum to a company called Nutrafruit. Nutrafruit planted 75,000 trees in southeast Queensland with an eye on the superfoods market. I visited a decade ago. It's growing at something like 20% uh, compound per annum. It's tens of billions of dollars globally, uh, just in particular segments. You know, the, the RTD beverage market in the health um, segment is about 90 billion US dollars a year. It's huge. It's got two things going for it, which I'm really pleased about. One is it's a health product, so it can go into the health market, but on top of that, it tastes fantastic. We're not growing plums. Yeah, no, we're growing, growing antioxidants. Yep. The story revealed the extraordinary results Professor Lindsay Brown achieved by feeding plum juice to obese rats with chronic health problems. Their blood pressure goes up, their heart function goes down, their liver function is, goes down, the liver is damaged, it's got fat in it. So all those things that happen to humans when they're obese happen to these rats as well. When we put the extra purple plum juice in their food, it all comes back to normal without changing their diet. So the blood pressure is normal the fat pads are back to normal, the liver function, the heart function are all back to normal. Is this a food? Is it a medicine? Yeah, what is it? It's, it's wonderful. It's functional food. Fast forward a decade. Professor Yasmina Sultanbawa, the director of the Centre for Nutrition and Food Sciences at the University of Queensland in Brisbane, says the plum's impact on humans is similar to what was seen in the fat rats. What about what it does to blood pressure? Can it stave off diabetes? Is it protective for heart health? Yes, studies show that anthocyanins, like the ones that are found in Queen Ghana Plum, still have those benefits to your health. Victoria University's Professor Michael Matai is investigating the plum's potential to improve brain health. There is evidence that people with early stage a dementia or perhaps mild cognitive impairment can be helped by this. Uh, certainly, there are some markers of inflammation which go down when they're taking Queen Garnet Plum extract. I'm doing the 10 times dilution of the crude extract. I can show you the, the neuronal-like structures under the microscope. He's adding plum extract to lab-made neuronal cells, which mimic brain cells. So far, so encouraging. We see increases in genes or proteins made by the cells which drive the formation of new connections and the lengthening of the axons which are like the telephone wires that connect the different cells. That's the basis for things like making new memories or enhancing the, the signal that they, through which they communicate with each other. He says more work is needed to see if repairing injured brains is possible. His work ties in with the expanding area of research, the gut-brain connection, which Professor Sultan Bawa is exploring. People, the brain-gut 
is two organs that are talking to each other all the time. But we, have, we don't have enough of knowledge in that space. So if you can really get the gut and the brain to work together, and if you understand it more, you will get a much healthier population. It's hard to isolate each part of the digestive tract to see what happens when a plum is eaten. Luckily, her lab has Australia's only poo machine, which mimics the human digestive tract. The mouth is in the fridge. In the mouth, you get the oral bacteria and you get other enzymes, so we put amylase in, and then it goes to the stomach, where the anthocyanins are quite stable because of the acidic environment. Then it will go to the small intestine, where a certain amount of absorption occurs, less than 5%. But most of the absorption happens, the magic happens in the colon where the poo is. And you get like 10 trillion microorganisms in your poo. And that microbiota will convert the anthocyanins to little molecules like ferulic acid, vanillic acid, syringic acid, which are really good for your body, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and even cognitive functions that will be improved. It gives you some important information as to how these anthocyanins are digested in your body and what is absorbed. Given Australia's ageing population and the cost of dementia and brain injury to families and the economy, Professor Saltenbauer says it makes sense to spend more on gut-brain research. By spending millions, could they save billions? Of course. Of course. A hundred percent. With just an extra $2 million, she says her team could turbocharge its work. While scientists have been busy, so too have farmers. There are now over 30 growers in Australia managing 300,000 trees. There are even orchards in South Africa and Spain. Last year, the Queensland orchard was sold to an Australian agribusiness fund manager on behalf of a Dutch regenerative farm investment group. It's been leased back to the original owners, the Goodrich family. And half of Nutrafruit is now owned by Sydney businessman Body and Sid Gosh. They recently visited Queensland to see how the QG nectar is made. Last year, a third of Australia's three million kilos of QG plums were exported to China. It's how the Goshes keep prices up for local growers. China accounts for 50% of consumption of plums in the world. We are doing a huge amount of marketing in China. We are by far the most expensive Australian summer fruit in China. The market has a level of awareness, which will then set us up really well for when trees are actually in the ground there and producing fruit too. Key to the fruit's longevity in the market is trust that anthocyanin levels are high and stable. 18.4. Very high average. Really, really yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, anything but 13 is great, so that's even better. So, you know, awesome. compared to any other fruit. It's up to growers not to pick too early and processors not to let the fruit oxidise. Growers pay the goshes an annual tree royalty and the Queensland government gets a cut. Is the Queensland government making Six figures or seven figures a year? Six figures. And or hundreds of thousands, not millions yet. Yeah, hundreds of thousands. The Goshes produce powders, juices and extracts for retail and the food industry. This fleeting season that we have, what about after that? What can we do with the fruit that maybe isn't fit for the retail markets? So that's been more of the focus. How do we pull out those natural compounds as they present themselves? How do we get them into the hands of people outside of this season. They were recently contacted by actor Chris Hemsworth's production company. Several years ago, the movie star discovered he was predisposed to developing Alzheimer's. He's developing a TV series on preventative measures and the QG may snag a role. While it is early conversations, their interest and excitement is, I think, they weren't expecting to find something in their own backyard. So there's a lot of energy around that. Professor Topp says the QG shows the potential of research and development to deliver. You put the investment in and you just need to get, um, you know, a couple of these extraordinary ones and the return is just uh, fantastic. 
When Dougal Russell tried to recreate it, he couldn't, which is why the QG has been labelled a one-off, a freak. There's over 6,000 plum varieties in the world, or there has been over the years, and uh, a lot of them just pass into oblivion. How long do you think it'll be around? Well, that's an interesting thing. Um, <laughs> I think it'll be around uh, long after Dougal and I are dead and gone. <laughs> Could be around for 100 years. <laughs>